Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I thought that the earlier video was far better. I'm sure you'll get to uh, get to see a lot more of it later. Uh, I've been a career consultant. Uh, I'm still a career consultant. I've, I've, it's been around 20 years. Uh, so I fall in the, the Brahmin category of going to uh, fairly okay institutes. And I also fall in that category of the CXOs, etc. So I would ideally have been a great entrepreneur, which I realize I don't have the courage to be an entrepreneur. So, you know, what's the best to live, al live along with them and, you know, to help them out and uh, see some of them fulfilling their dreams. Uh, I've been, uh, as I said, in the last 20 years has been all consulting uh, post B school. And then uh, the last 10 year, the last nine to 10 years has been Kerala. So I came to set up uh, Ernst & Young operations in Kerala and uh, we started off as a one-man operation for consulting. We had a small uh, IT back office here, which was doing some payroll and uh, IT stuff. But uh, if you look at the nine years, we are close to 7,000 now. And uh, we have close to 200 odd people doing consulting only for companies in Kerala. Uh, if, you, if you look at some of the numbers in terms of growth, uh, the consulting revenues in Kerala are uh, topping quite a lot. And uh, the, sh the sheer growth rates of uh, growth rate of consulting companies in Kerala is very interesting because it's a nascent area and a lot of people are starting to use uh, consultants in, in Kerala. So you can't really compare it with a Bombay, a Bangalore or a Delhi. Uh, but what's exciting is, uh, you know, we all we all fall for that one uh, one narrative fallacy where uh, you you hear about Kerala you would uh, think about the uh, you know the strikes and uh, the hartals and etc cetera, etc cetera. but there is a there is a hidden kerala as well which is uh, which is doing some fantastic work in terms of industry and in terms of technology and uh, and very interestingly a word which you would not associate with kerala manufacturing the only difference is uh, this is not a place where you can do large scale large land kind of manufacturing operations this is a place where you have to apply a lot more in terms of technology and in terms of uh, in terms of skill and those kind of companies um, have really caught up in the last uh, what has been interesting is um, a, a colleague of mine um, uh, in fact a, a, a client of mine from the past mr balagopal uh, uh, mr uh, c balagopal he founded this company called thermo penpal and i don't know how many of you know thermo penpal in trivandrum has a factory which makes the highest number of blood bag blood bags in the world a normal blood bag kind of product gets exported to 10 countries thermo penpal in trivandrum in vilapilshala uh, they export to uh, close to 54 to 60 countries around the world so if you have a if you have a health debacle let's say when you are in peru or when you are in um, brazil you are likely to see a made in india uh, blood bag dangling somewhere over there and then that would have been made in Trivandrum. So some of these stories are less likely known because you know great stories also don't have news value right I mean that's what uh, that's what a lot of people say you know you you lack the cert you, you lack news value uh, when you put a lot of positive news and people especially uh, educated society is also a cynical society and that's what Kerala is that uh, you know we we tend to like satire a lot more than uh, you know actual truths we tend to like negative information a lot more than a uh, uh, lot more than the other kind of information that we want to hear so hence the press also is a little more focused onto the scams and uh, things which are not happening well uh, so uh, looking at the time uh, let me tell you in terms of a theme i think um, manufacturing, high-tech manufacturing is something which is really catching on in Kerala. Thermo Penpal is one example. And I have 50 of these examples which Bala and I are writing a book on, uh, which 
broadly the theme is you know make in kerala and what uh, you know what making making in kerala is all about and all these are happening with a fairly benevolent um, startup ecosystem which is there in kerala i mean you would be surprised i work across india with multiple states i have not seen a uh, ecosystem like kerala to the extent i would say the kerala startup ecosystem literally spoon feeds you as an entrepreneur the the amount of help and yeah to to some level the amount of interference that you get from uh, an ecosystem in uh, you know ecosystem that we have in kerala is slightly is far more than what you can really imagine and some of the people who have been funded and who have been supported by the kerala startup mission will tell you that so it's a very interesting uh, it's a very interesting ecosystem science related uh, startups so uh, i took a break from ey to set up a fund uh, and along with uh, other partners it's a it's a company called emerge ventures uh, which is uh, it was already existing i just joined in uh, to help on the life sciences part we uh, we have gathered uh, you know we we have a small fund in place which looks at uh, early startups in the life sciences space when i say life sciences i mean precision medicine i mean um, genomics some of these companies and we also have a portfolio where we have some education we have some um, uh, uh, big data and data analytics etc so it's around 10 companies uh, four of which are in kerala itself uh, and of course my break finishes off uh, by the end of the month so i'm back to uh, back to ey again um, doing a little bit of consulting and of course doing a little bit of investing as well so, so the themes i repeat one is high tech manufacturing is what we find exciting in kerala we have i saw uh, asimo of robotics jayakrishnan sitting out there who has a fantastic company and uh, i'm sure a lot of you would uh, you know would look at organizations like those which which inspire others in technology uh, there are lots of life sciences companies some of our invested companies is mac genome uh, who's getting an award today evening anirudh is here dr anirudh is here and uh, then there is uh, there is med genome which is based out of bangalore which does again uh, uh clinical uh, gene based diagnostics genetic diagnostics is what they do and they, all these companies have a fair amount of play between science and maths as well so you know there is fair amount of i don't want to give you a pitch like what anmol did in terms of all those complicated words but anything which marries uh, multiple uh, disciplines like for example some of our interest is you know some organizations which marry biology and computational maths which is what is used in genetics and genomics is of you know very high interest and we feel that it's a future education will always be of interest healthcare will always be of interest so and there are examples of all such companies in kerala of course at a much smaller scale than uh, what's there elsewhere but we we are there and we are we are hoping to see i think we are also reaching a particular time in our ecosystem where entrepreneurship in kerala is going to grow even if there is not immense support from the government while we are today getting a lot of support from the government what happen what happens is the next stage like a bangalore where it doesn't really matter who is ruling or it doesn't really matter what the government policies are the the startups are going to thrive because there is an ecosystem of them helping each other there is an ecosystem where you have enough talent which is available in all the startups and there is an ecosystem where all these uh, you know uh, all the new technologies could be discussed amongst you know um, amongst the uh, the uh, the entrepreneurs and uh, made a lot of sense of so from from all those standpoints kerala today presents a very uh, very rosy picture and uh, what is interesting about kerala is also the fact that there is a lot of talent available out here so when i look at science which is of interest lot of great institutes which are churning out biotechnology students lot of great institutes which are uh, of course engineering etc it's, it's there everywhere but uh, biology and science you have a fair amount of institutes in, uh, in in kerala between trivandrum and here you have a large number of very interesting scientific institutions right from the isros to a lot of uh, to the tropical gardens uh, you know the biological the tbgri in trivandrum uh, the cancer in the uh, rajiv gandhi cancer centers all these are uh, marquee research institutes you will not really see 
um, you know, likewise. In fact, somebody was telling me that if you look at the density of research institutes in Kerala and uh, between the stretch and if you look at the per kilometer number of research institutes, perhaps Kerala uh, can feature along with the Minnesota in the US or, you know, with the medical equipment cluster in Japan. So some of these things we tend to, we tend to forget and we tend to overlook. So look at some of these positives. I see my time racing really fast. Uh, again, in terms of technology, one more thing I want to add is we are moving into what we call as, you know, the next half of the chessboard, where whatever change which is going to happen in technology will happen exponentially now. There will not be small changes. There will be a huge amount of changes. And these huge amount of changes, all the entrepreneurs who are going to ride this change, ride this wave, will find money available. So it's not just the large soft bank kind of purses which are, which are there, but you will find even the smaller investors coming in. Uh, Kerala has an ecosystem where there are a lot of traditional entrepreneurs and increasingly what I see amongst friends and amongst you know, people in Thai, et cetera, is people are looking, looking at startup funding as an alternate investment mode as well. So some people are there. I mean, it's not just about giving back to the society that you're funding startups for, but it's also uh, the fact that you know that if you fund some of these startups, you're likely to make money. I would not be really very bothered if you're not making, you know, uh, of entrepreneurs who are not really, uh, you know, not really making money right now. But if they're on the right kind of, if they're on the right kind of projects, if uh, their science is in place and if their business plans are in place, you are likely to do well here or you're likely to do well uh, elsewhere. So uh, I stop here. It was a fairly short talk. Most of you know my connects. Otherwise, you can take my connects from Satish or any of the talk folks uh, in case you want to reach out. Uh, I'm back in Kerala uh, beginning of November when I resume my uh, Ernst & Young role. Or otherwise, if any of you have science-related startups or education-related startups, do feel free to reach out. Thanks a lot.